So in the previous example, we looked at um, what happens when we take a green die and a red die. We roll the red, roll the green, we come up with a value. The smallest value could be 2, the largest value could be 12. Those values, when we roll two die, can take on a range, any going anywhere from 2 to 12. And the probability associated with each one of those numbers could be determined just by looking at its frequency or its p proportion. Um, and so the proportion of times we see a 3, a sum of 3, um, could be easily determined by looking at our table here. It occurred 2 out of the 36 possibilities, and 7 is the most highest um, occurring value, has the highest um, proportion, highest percentage of values, and highest probability of occurring. And we said that what we have here then is a, um, a probability distribution table. Um, so a more um, kind of traditional setup for a probability distribution is um, you have a set of values that a random variable can take. Let's say oh, a couple is going to have um, five kids. So let's use this as the other example. A couple is going to have five kids and we're interested in discussing how many of those kids would be girls. The probability of having a girl, let's say it's 0 0.52 and um, that's a rent. How many girls they will have out of those five is a random event. So we're interested in, um, let's say, the number of girls. Out of um, five kids. So they could have two girls and three boys, etc. Um, that's our interest. But that's a random number, right? And as we commonly do, we'll use x. It's a variable. It could be. It's a. But it's typically the what we use for a random event. And there could there could be maybe no girls. Right? It could be all boys. It could be one girl, two, three, four, or five girls. So there are six different options. Right? Um, even though there are only five kids that we're planning on having, it could be six different options. And I'll say that each one of those could be labeled so that this might be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 and so forth up through the last one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 different possibilities. So the random variable is what the outcomes could be. And then each one of those um, has a probability of occurring. Um, now, what's the probability that if they have, um, let's say that they have those five kids, and then the probability of a girl is what we stated before. <coughs> probability of a girl is the 0 0.52, and we're interested in the probability of having exactly um, two girls. So we saw earlier this is a binomial 
distribution type of problem. So we would use binomial PDF. Um, there were five trials. Probability of a success is 0.52, and the number of successes um, that we wish to calculate the probability for is two. So what's the probability of having two girls is what this will give us. Five efforts, five trials, probability of a success is 0.52, and the probability of having exactly two successes um, is what binome PDF will give you. If you plug this into your calculator, you should get something right around 0 0.299. <coughs> and if you were to just simply do this, um, binome PDF doesn't know if it should give you the probability like this right here that we just calculated was for 0.299 but he doesn't know if he should give you the probability for three successes, four, five, or so forth so he'll end up giving you a list of probabilities right, so that's one way to get this list is to leave off the count here in binome PDF and if you do that, or if you just repeatedly use binome PDF with values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, um, what you'll see is that you get values 0 0.025, 0 0.138, 0.140, Zero point three two four, zero point one seven five, and zero point zero three eight. Um, those are all the options. You cannot get any other option, um, any other event occurring. Either you're going to have zero girls or some value up to five. Um, and so the probability of getting either zero or one or two or three or four or five has to be 100%. And if you add those up, you'll see that the sum of all of those will give you 100%. So that's the other characteristic of a probability distribution. The summation of the probabilities um, from the very first one um, to the last one is always going to be 100%. They will add up to exactly 1. We've done some rounding here just for the sake of demonstration. So that's the other characteristic of a probability distribution. And so this is a common format where you have um, the random variables and the probability of those random variables, and that they, uh, the probabilities all add up to 100%. So what can we do with that? Um, what I'd like to be able to do is um, use this information to determine um, expected values, like kind of an average, meaning that given that you have, um, let's go here, on average, how many kids, how many girls would you expect to have out of five? What's the average number? So if I looked at families, you know, maybe a thousand families, where each one of those families had five kids, and then if I counted the number of girls in each one of those families, 
right? If I kind of continue that process, um, what would be the average number of girls? And I want to make an argument to say that the average would end up being um, a value that we can calculate in a very succinct way. And that value I'm going to call the expected value. Meaning if I were to go into any one of those households, how many girls would I expect to see where each one of those households had five kids? How many girls would I expect to see? So we'll see that next. We'll talk about expected values and how we calculate that in the next clip.